It's typically thought that our blood sugar responses are straightforward and predictable. For example, refined carbs should spike our blood sugar more than unrefined carbs. However, today I am going over a study that shows our gut bacteria actually make things way more complicated and unpredictable than we'd ever realized when it comes to blood sugar. Hey there, I'm Mish, and I am a full-time researcher with my PhD, and by day I conduct and publish studies of my own, whereas by night I share the results of other people's studies here to help you reach your weight loss, fitness, health, and nutrition goals. And as you may recall if you are a regular here, a few videos ago I talked about how glycemic index, which people use as a measure of blood sugar response to various foods, is actually not all that useful for predicting people's blood sugar responses. But one conclusion from that could have been, well, all that really matters is that we know that one food will in general spike people's blood sugars more than another food, right? Like all that matters is to know that white rice will spike your blood sugar more than brown rice. Well, the study I'm about to go over will even blow that up, so prepare yourselves. <laughs> also stick around to the end if you want to hear a crazy other finding from another study about gut bacteria, blood sugar, and ambient temperature. And in the main study I'll be going over today, the researchers gave people either standard white bread or whole wheat sourdough. And standard white bread, as we know, is generally thought to cause huge blood sugar spikes, whereas whole grain breads, especially sourdough, is generally thought to cause less of a blood sugar spike, especially according to the glycemic index. And based on both the glycemic index and common wisdom about blood sugar, everyone should have more of a blood sugar response to the white bread than the whole wheat sourdough, because it's thought of as kind of a physiological principle that the more available carbs you have, the more refined they are, the more it should spike everyone's blood sugar. And according to this common wisdom, there should be no personalized responses. So the relative spiking of blood sugar between different foods should not vary between different people. And these researchers directly tested that idea. And to do this, they looked at how many people had the expected higher blood sugar spike from white bread versus whole wheat sourdough. And they found that half of people did indeed have more of a blood sugar spike from white bread than from whole wheat sourdough. But they found that the other half of people had the reverse effect. So half of their participants actually had more of a blood sugar spike from an equivalent amount of whole wheat sourdough than they did from the equivalent amount of white bread. And so you might be asking, well, what the heck is happening here? What could possibly cause this? Well, the answer, I guess, is not surprising based on the title and intro to this video. It seems to be gut bacteria. So these researchers did something pretty cool and crazy, which was to get stool samples from all the participants and actually assay their microbiome. So get the different species of gut bacteria and their relative abundances. And using only this gut bacteria information, the researchers were able to successfully predict who would have more of a blood sugar response from white bread versus whole wheat sourdough 83% of the time. So they were able to have really high predictive accuracy just from the types of bacteria people had in their stool. And what the study shows us is that different people have different blood sugar responses in terms of their relative responses to different foods. So I might have a higher blood sugar response from white bread because of my specific gut microbiome, whereas you might have a higher blood sugar response to whole wheat bread because of your specific gut microbiome. And in case you're curious, I'll put up the two names here for the two types of bacteria that were most predictive of people's relative blood sugar responses to white bread versus whole wheat sourdough. And do note that our gut bacteria can change, so these results aren't saying that you will always have your specific pattern of blood sugar responses your whole life, but rather your current gut microbiome is likely producing the blood sugar responses that you have, and that can change with your diet and other factors that I'm about to talk about at the end of this video over the course of your life. And before I get to the last crazy finding, I just want to note that this is not saying that processed carbs are just as good as unprocessed carbs because some people will have higher blood sugar spikes from one versus the other. The point here is that your blood sugar response is not a good measure of how healthy a food is, in particular because you can't really know unless you're measuring your blood sugar constantly. And even then, blood sugar response does not map on to how healthy a food is. So whole grains have a lot of healthy things about them that are healthier than refined grains. So even if you might be one of the people who has a higher blood sugar spike to refined grains, it doesn't mean that there's no point eating whole grains because blood sugar is just a small part of the health story. So for example, according to average blood sugar responses, fructose, pure fructose, would be healthier for you than fruit or beans, which I'm sure 
just by intuition and logic and all the other health research out there, you know that that is not the case. Pure fructose is not better for you than fruit or beans, even though fructose spikes your blood sugar less than fruit or beans. And if you're curious about more of that craziness, check out my glycemic index video here when you're done with this video. And I actually have two mini bonus findings here. So the first is that our gut bacteria not only influence our blood sugar responses to carbohydrate containing foods, but our microbiome also actually modulates gluconeogenesis in our liver. So how we actually make blood sugar out of other compounds like proteins. So what this means is that our gut bacteria are actually part of the equation for determining how much protein we convert into carbs and blood sugar. And for the second little crazy bonus finding, it's been shown in a study with mice, so pretty bleeding edge stuff, that exposing mice to cold ambient air temperatures actually rapidly shifts their gut microbiome in a way that improves their glucose tolerance. So if you also have terrible heating like I do when it's cold out, then maybe you will be getting some benefit potentially. Not to say you should try to cold expose, but if you're having to deal with it anyway, at least this can be a silver lining potentially. And for a meta point here, I've been doing more controversial videos lately, largely by request, so like getting into the big debates, but I really love sharing videos on crazy, unexpected findings that you won't find anywhere else because they're hard to find in the literature. So I really love doing this kind of stuff because it's so fascinating to me, but I'm also curious what you think. Do you prefer the more big, <laughs> covering lots of studies, getting into the big debates type videos, or do you prefer the videos that no one else is talking about, so they're not controversial, it's just studies that are really hard to find. So let me know what you prefer in the comments below or if you prefer a mix. And if you are interested in bonus content, weighing in on videos, asking questions to get answered in videos, and more, head on over to my Patreon, which is linked above and below. And if you are feeling generous and want to help support me in making videos, in addition to the Patreon, there's also a GoFundMe for one-time support, so check out that link below if you're interested. So I hope you found this study as interesting as I did, and if you like this video, please like and share it to get this information out there. And if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell below to stay up to date on all this science. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.